Hi, I'm John Dobis. I'm here with Mark Skousen. He's the editor of Forecasts and Strategies. And Mark, you're not just a financial guy. You're also somewhat of a political guy, or at least a, a political science guy. How, I got a question for you. How does your politics inform your investing, and how does your investing inform your political views? Well, I have a PhD in economics, but it used to be called political economy, and I think that's a more accurate term, because I think uh, politics does have a lot to do with investing, and what policies, it's kind of known in, in philosophy as the great man theory, the great woman theory, that uh, an, an individual leader can make a huge difference. Reagan made a difference, Clinton made a difference, George W. Bush made a difference, Obama made a difference. Uh, not always in the way you expect, Historically, uh, the stock market has done better, a lot better under Democrats than Republicans. Now, why the heck is that? Yeah, we're all trying to figure that one out. Maybe it's because in the Democrats, they promise a lot, they spend a lot, uh, they bring out the punch bowl, and then the Republicans uh, cut spending, uh, reduce the size of government, and take the punch bowl away. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, the stock market I, I, tends to do better when, to when that. the punch bowl is out there. So. You mentioned the great, the great man theory. I mean, great men come along at the right times, too. And maybe it wasn't really the man, but, but, but the times. Let me just draw a little analogy for you. Obama, FDR, Great Depression and Great Recession. Uh, bull market from 1932 to 1937 in stocks. Bull market from 2009 to when will it end in stocks. Do you see any dangerous parallels between those two periods in time? I see uh, Obama as more of an LBJ type of character who's expanding the great society with his Obamacare, Dodd-Frank regulations and so forth. Uh, definitely an advocate of big government. Uh, and the stock market has done really well, but I think it's more not him, but the Federal Reserve. I think the central bank has a lot more to do with it, as it did in FDR's time, because the Federal Reserve did become more accommodating from 1933 mm -hmm. to 1937. It, when it didn't become, a, when and it became it, disaccommodating, yeah, the, right. the market, uh, maybe that could have had to do with the yeah. events in Europe, or was it monetary policy? I mean, these are not just academic questions, because yeah. these are things that Janet Yellen and her board of governors are facing right now. So if you think that if the Fed were to become a little tighter in the monetary policy right now, would we be in for another redux of 1937? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't see any indication of that. Yellen is keeping interest rates permanently low. And this is a Keynesian. Keynes, Keynes believed in permanent low interest rates. And uh, they're getting away with it right now, even despite the inflationary nature of Fed policy. Uh, but you have to remember the dollar is a world currency, and so they can uh, get away with inflating the money supply without causing the CPI to go up because they're exporting inflation. Well, let's hope that we've learned lessons and Ben Bernanke's uh, research at Harvard wasn't all for naught.